Hello and welcome to the start of a brand new AI tutorial series in Unreal Engine 4. This tutorial series will be covering how to create stealth based AI enemies. So during the course of this series we're going to cover things like getting the character to crouch and going to prone and have that affect their visibility to enemies, or the ability to uh, attack patrolling enemies and also do takedowns on sneaked up upon enemies as well. Uh, plus a few other little little bits here and there too. So join me now, we're going to start off with getting our character to be able to go into a crouch position um, and stand up again. And so for this I have installed already the Anim Starter Pack. This is a starter pack that you can find on the Epic Marketplace for free and it comes with a load of basic animations already for you using the UE4 mannequin. So we'll be using these coupled with uh, some code to create our own animation blueprints and the ability for us to crouch in this episode. So to get started, we're going to set up the input for our character. So for this, you want to go into edit and then project settings. In here, scroll down to the input options on the left and you'll see action mappings and axis mappings at the top. We want a new action mapping. We click on new button and the new name for this one would be crouch slash prone and the reason why it's slash prone is because we're going to use the same button if when held will tend us to go into prone mode rather than crouch mode more on prone later let's just focus on getting crouch working so the input i'm going to use for this is going to be the left shift so i'm going to click on the drop down here and search for left shift you can also tie a gamepad controls if you want to if you're if you're working with a gamepad for now that'll do for me i'm going to close that and go back to our project files and i'm going to go into our player characters uh code here on the third person template so i'm going to go into here go edit third person character and i'm going to first of all go to the viewport and change the mesh here to use the other mannequin. So when you import the Anima Starter Pack, it comes with a whole new mannequin that is mapped to existing animations. So I'm gonna to go to my mesh, and change it to the other mannequin, and change its anim class to none. So make sure it's set to none because we're gonna create our own animation blueprint later on. For now, hit compile. So what's happening here is that it's sit in A pose, and uh, it's going to stay in A pose until you do animations. So for now, that'll do. Um, one thing you want, I'm going to do here as well is just turn the capsule and hit not to be hidden in game. So I've got that turned off, and you'll see reasons why I've got that turned off in a second. It's just for debug reasons. You'll eventually have that completely off um, in the actual game. So let's go over to the event graph and start working on our code here. So with that input now set into the project settings, we can search for it by right clicking into our graph and search for crouch slash prone. And there it is. So with input action crouch slash prone, we want to be able to tell our character movement to go into prone, into uh, crouch, sorry. So click on your character movement and search details for it for crouch. And you want to make sure you've got can crouch ticked to be true. Next on the press here, we're going to do crouch and you'll find a function that is pre-built for the character template to do a crouch so let's just show you what that is doing so if I push play now and you see the capsule here and if I push left shift you can see the capsule change shape and the camera goes down with it this is a pre-built function that controls these things and basically because the capsule is now smaller it means I'll be able to go underneath other objects and we'll use the same capsule in this case here uh, as also for our prone it's just changing the animation the benefit of going into prone will allow the player character to go underneath even smaller objects and or decrease their visibility to enemies so now let's go back to our code so this is quite simply just press it once we're going to crouch however I want it to when I push it again it comes out of crouch so we need to check what we're doing. Are we crouching or are we not crouching before we tell you what to do? So drag your character movement component out and drop it into your graph. And then from there, we're going to search for crouch. And you'll see the one saying is crouching. This is pretty standard. It's just to tell you whether true or false, whether you're crouching or not. And now go into a branch 
that is connected to it and the input action. So if you are crouching, we want the true to go to uncrouch and the false to go to crouch. So false to crouch and true to uncrouch. Hit compile, go back to your game. So now if I push left shift, it goes to crouch, push it again, it goes to uncrouch. So now we've got that set up, we can now work on our animation. So as I said, the anime starter pack comes with loads of animations and they're all here. And we've got uh, idols, we've got crouch to stand, stand to crouch, uh, other idols here going on to uh, loads of stuff we can do. We've also got some blend spaces here. So we've got blend space already made for crouch walking, like so. And that controls all the movement in all different directions for crouch walk, which is really handy. Um, we also got a blend space for jogging. So jogging in all directions, like so. Um, and we're going to use these coupled with a new animation blueprint to adding our transition from crouching to not crouching. So I'm going to go into my area here and create a new animation blueprint. When you do this, it will ask you for which one you want to use. Make sure you use the correct mannequin for the one for the anim starter pack. In this case, mine is the top one. Just hover over it, you'll see the path and it should say it's an anim starter pack content folder. And we're going to call this one uh, player anim. We go in here and we'll get the blank player animation blueprint. So for this, I'm going to create a new state machine. So I'm going to go into state and start with a new state machine. Uh, type in state machine, there we go. And let's rename this uh, standing locomotion. And I'm going to go in here. And in here, we're going to do our various states. So we have the first state, which is going to be idle. So go add state and it'll be idle. And I also want to connect another one to that, which is going to be our jog. So drag that out and do add state again. And we'll call this one jog. When you do this, it'll come up with a transition rule. This is basically a rule determining whether it should go from idle to jog. And we want to do it vice versa as well. So I'm going to drag a line from jog to idle to get that two-way happening there. So the idle here will transition to jog when a certain value has been true. So idle, we're going to make that go true when the speed of our character has increased. So let's create a new variable on the left here. New variable and type in speed. And that'll be a variable type of a float. Go into the transition rule from idle to jog and then drag speed out and choose get. From there, we want to check whether or not it's greater than zero. So do greater than and leave it at zero and then plug that into the result. So when speed is increased, it'll go to jog. And the, likewise, the one going backwards is going to be when speed is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so now we have to set up the animations that each one of these is going to use. So go into idle here and in idle we can drag our animation asset to this. So I'm going to go to asset browser and in here we're going to do uh, a rule here. So we're going to make it change what animation it's using based on whether or not we're crouching, prone, so forth. So I'm going to go into func uh, not functions, variables here and do is crouching and that will be a boolean. We're going to drag that out. And then we're going to do a blend pose by ball. That will be plugged into the result. And the true pose is going to be crouching idle. And the false pose is going to be just normal standing idle. So I'm going to search my assets here for crouch idle. And you'll see idle rifle hip. That will do. Plug that into true. And... Otherwise, the standard rifle hip for false. Hit compile. Then go back to your animation graph. We're then going to go and back into our uh, graph here and connect that up to the output. And 
there you go. So now we go back into my standing locomotion and do jog. So go into jog here. And very similarly, we're going to do is crouching, just get, blend, pose by ball. And is crouching true is going to be, uh, we want the, sorry, crouch walk, sorry. Crouch walk, there we go. And that'll be true. And if it's not true, we're going to use the jog blend space instead. And these blend spaces require two values, the direction and speed. Well, we've already got speed, so we can use that one. We'll drag that out and plug that into speed there and speed there. Uh, we also need direction. So new variable, direction, and that'll be a float as well. Plugging that in to both of those. Connect up the blend poses to the output and hit compile. So now if I go back to the anim graph start, this is now going to be controlling whether we are crouching or standing and change the animation to match that. The is crouching boolean is going to change when a certain transition animation has finished. So let's work on that transition animation. So I'm going to close this and go into animation starter pack. And in here we want to find standing to idle. So here I've got stand to, I uh, stand to crouch, sorry, uh, rifle hip. You can see it's the character crouching down. So we're going to use this as a montage. So I'm going to right click on that and do create an in montage and leave it as that. And also going to do the same for crouching to stand rifle hip as well. Create an in montage. Perfect. So here you can see crouch to stand. And what we're going to do is we're going to bind the, an event to when these montages finish on the animation blueprint. So when they are finished, we'll change the is crouching variable to whatever we want. So let's do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into my montage for stand to crouch. And at the end of the notify lane, at the end of the animation, I'm gonna right click and go add notifier and choose new notifier right at the top. And I'm gonna name this one is crouching notify. Hit save, and then we're gonna go into our animation blueprint. And on the event graph of our animation blueprint, we're gonna right click and search for that name of that notify. So is crouching, and you'll see event anim notify is crouching notify. Click on that, and this event will trigger whenever we end that montage. So that montage was going from standing to crouch. So what I'm gonna do there, when that ends, I'm gonna set is crouching to true. Now I want to do the exact same, but for the other way. So let's go into crouch to stand. And again, we're going to go and add a notifier to the end of this. Right click, add notify, new notify. And this would be is crouching, uh, is standing, sorry. Is standing, notify. Hit save, go back to the animation blueprint. And in here, we're going to do is standing notify and that'll be set to is crouching but this time false and all that's left on here is to go to the animation graph and we need to make it so that slots for the montage to go into are going to be played at the moment this animation has no slots so i'm going to drag out after the locomotion state machine and just add a slot and you want default slot if you don't have this the montage won't play when you this basically overrides animation with a montage so hit compile and we're done with the animation blueprint for now i'm going to close this and go into our player character and go to the viewport and make the mesh have that new animation blueprint and there you go hit compile then go to the event graph when we do crouch we want to just play a montage so drag this out from here and do play montage. And you'll see play montage. It will ask for a skeletal mesh component, which is just your mesh. You should drag that out. And then the montage you want to play is if you want to crouch. So we'll do crouch to uh, standard crouch. And on the uncrouch, we're going to do the opposite one. 
say play montage and we're going to do uh, crouch to stand hit compile so let's see how this looks so now if I push play and crouch you see I crouch down and stand up now you see you have that little jolt there uh, what that's happening there is because it's trying to blend out of the montage back to the original animation which isn't correct what we're going to do is disable the auto blend so if we go back to the montages and open them up and on the blend option on the left you'll see in that bottom enable auto blend out tick that off for both of them so that's that one and this one here also untick that and if we were to push play now you'll see I can go down and I'll stay down push up and I'll stay up and there you have it we haven't done the running animation we'll do that next time uh, but there we have our animations moving into crouch and standing up so the last thing we gonna do before we wrap things up is I'm going to change it so we don't get that camera change when we crouch uh, it can be a bit jarring so what if we turn that off well the easy way to do that is in your third person character just change the camera boom rather than being attached to the capsule component attach it to the mesh the capsule component is the one that's changing not the mesh so leave that as that and then hit play and I now got crouching without the camera doing its weird movement there we go so that'll do it for this episode in the next episode we're going to go on to prone so how do you get the character to go into a prone pose uh, by holding down the key you can watch the episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daly if you like what I do and want to support me head over to Patreon and support me there and you get access to all my videos before anyone else as well as exclusive content and early access to premium series thank you so much for all my YouTube members and patrons for their continued support if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.